What is your name, sir? Albert Winkler. Albert Winkler? Yes, sir. Charge says it's a simple misdemeanor. So I guess I need to know today whether you want to plead guilty or not guilty. Well, I'm going to plead guilty to it. And no real point in fighting. Yeah. You haven't got a citation with you. three weeks if I can because I gotta get my house taxes and everything paid as well. They're not due for a while yet. I'm just trying to get all the money together. Sure. Sorry for the inconvenience. So I'm gonna give you until uh, the 26th of September to get it paid. Okay. I'm gonna set a show cause hearing for September 29th. Okay. I, we, we went down and got the lady back. Just a second, I just, I need to get the, I'm going to finish this order first and then I'll get the details from you. I was just curious as to whether you had figured, figured it out. Another junkyard. So you clean the place up at all? Yes. Which cars are they talking about? I'm, I guess this here on this paper it says there's one in the front yard. Um, every vehicle I have that's in the front yard are licensed or in storage. So I'm not sure um, which one it is. So they would stop and let us an overload something.
sure that she has tried to get you to clean the thing out. We have. Apparently she says that two of the vehicles are so deep in the grass that she can't. We've been working on that. We've been going and cutting grass and... You guys stand up. I think the vehicles moved. She says there's one up front, two in the back that are not licensed. She says it's hard to tell on the two well, in the back because of the grass. I don't know when the last time she was looking here, but they are moving. August 8th. Huh? August 8th. And I don't understand which one's up front because I, every vehicle that's in my driveway are licensed and tagged. Uh, a couple of them are put in storage at this present time, but otherwise they're all licensed and tagged. They're in storage. they got to be put in storage somewhere. I'm just parked on the property. I did not know that. Sorry. And that's the whole idea. I didn't and realize not, that. Not being a junkyard. Because so. the one, the one car that's up front that I can think of that she'd say was junk is the uh, '95 Buick, the maroon one, and. Um, my transmission went out in my other 95 and I've got somebody, I don't know when they're going to be able to come over and do it, but they were there last weekend and they said a transmission went out in the brown More one. More excuses. And they said that they will take parts out of the brown one and put you know, it in the uh, I can crack you with $750 on each one of these, you know. But something's about to be done here. I'm not, I'm not interested in hearing excuses. You know, you've had quite a bit of time here. I didn't realize the moon once there was one of the cars in question. I if that's one well, question at why all. Don't you go, why don't you go back over and talk to Sherry and just have a conversation with her and tell her what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. If I have her tell you what needs to be done, I'll give you two weeks to get it done. And if it's not done, then I'm just going to crack it. Okay. All Sounds right. good. And, you know, once I impose these fines, they'll be paid, you know, because... We have, to, we have to garnish wages or whatever they have to do, you know. Fines, well, the biggest thing is, I set a show cause hearing, and if you don't pay it, then I give you 10 days in jail the first time, and 30 days in jail the second time. You know, I'm just telling you, I need business here. And I really, really get tired of hearing excuses. You know, we've all got, I can make excuses place to, you know, but let the grass grow up, rock my knees, and, you know, the city wouldn't be very happy with me either, so, mm -hmm. or let my garden grow up in weeds, you know, you just got to take care of your property, so, I'm going to give you until September 8th. Test the charges, or do you want to just plead guilty? What's the difference between pleading guilty and the other? Well, pleading guilty, then we don't have to um, pro, uh, don't have to present evidence, um, and 
and we don't have to argue and, and convince the court that you're guilty because you'd be admitting guilt. And if disputing, I guess, means we go forward, then I will put on my evidence as a state's attorney and um, put on the, the deputy here to give testimony against you. Come back at CUD, A, B, A, C, K. Say a testimony, but I don't know, you know. I just tell him, I just want him to leave me alone. That's it. You know, that's all I want. You know. I didn't want to press charge on him or nothing like that. I just, <coughs> you know, what he was doing. You know. You know? That is They would call Sac County Sheriff's Deputy Tory Cudovic to the stand. It's for the testimony you're about to give in the case will be the truth under penalty of perjury. Okay. Deputy Cudovic, you are a deputy with the Sac County Sheriff's Office, correct? Correct. And you've been in that capacity about four years now? Correct. And in that capacity, did you have occasion to meet the defendant, um, Mr. Alfred Sarko, on or around July 3rd, 2014? Yep. And where was that at? At his residence on the 400 block of Highway 71. Okay. Could you explain to the court the nature of uh, this encounter with the defendant? We got a call of a fight in progress at his residence. Upon my arrival there, uh, there's multiple people in his yard, some neighbors, some of his family, his sister. Um, as I arrived, I started talking to a female who identified as his sister who said, Alfred got in a fight with her boyfriend and that they had been fighting in the grass on the lawn of that residence. Um, Alfred came out at that time to come talk to me at which time I observed that he had a laceration of some sort, he was bleeding. So it is obvious that he'd been in a physical altercation with someone. Okay. Uh, he said that he got in a fight with his brother-in-law, that his brother-in-law was intoxicated and starting problems with him and his family. Um, I later found out that it appeared that his brother-in-law had 
uh, gotten him some kind of domestic, whether it was verbal or physical, with his sister. Um, and then came over to his house, and that's when they were talking. Marcos and the brother-in-law then got into a fight out in the yard. It was loud enough that the neighbors came running across the street. Um, I don't know where the property lines divide, but he was there dang there in the yard to the north of the neighbor's house, fighting in the grass. Okay, did he, uh, defendant, and you referred to a Marcos, Will Padua? Correct. And Alfred. Okay, and then they were defendant, fine. okay, and defendant Sorry. Alfred's Arco. Well, that's fine. But uh, this Marcos, would it be the brother-in-law? That, that would be the brother-in-law. Okay. Correct. And did defendant say anything as to how, you know, who threw the first punch or, you know, who, you know, touched who first or how this physical altercation came to being other than just words exchanged? I can't advise who threw the, I don't, I don't remember perfect. You know, Did the defendant say anything to you about self-defense? Well, self-defense, he never said he was defending himself. He said, quote, that his brother came over, his brother-in-law, Marcos, came over with starting issues. They got in a physical altercation. At this time, I asked him, you know, if he, if he came over to his house, do you want trespass charges? Do you want, you know, assault charges? Nope, I don't want to do nothing. I asked him if he wanted to write a statement on what happened. He said that he can't, he doesn't do that. He does not give statements. Okay. At this time, um, I seen, well, later, I found Mar Marcos, who had a lot worse injuries. If Marcos would have pressed charges, I would have charged the defendant with ser assault with serious injury. So we ended up having to take him to the hospital. He's beaten so badly. Okay. So it wasn't just a little fight out in the yard. Okay. So in your experience as an role. Okay. In your experience as an officer, uh, considering the nature of the uh, Mr. Marcos's injuries, would there have been an opportunity for the defendant in this case to um, disengage from whatever uh, right. self-defense? He may have uh, had to correct. Okay. I later found out that Marcos was on the ground and the defendant was above him. And how do you and how do you find that out? Both from Marcos and Marcos's girlfriend or wife, which would be Alfred's sister. Okay. Um, and then this was in Sac County, correct? Correct. Okay. Generally. And it's the same. Uh, Mr. Alfred Sarpo, I guess, is the same person uh, sitting here today as the one that you cited. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Do you have any questions for this witness? No, sir. You may step down. Additional evidence on behalf of the state. No, you're right. All right. State press. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Uh, Sarko, do you wish to testify? No. All right. Well, I am going to find that there is sufficient evidence here to support the charge of uh, I'm not sure I have it right. Disorderly conduct. Um, and I'm going to impose a $100 fine. $35 surcharge and $60 court costs. So it's going to be a total of $185. Uh, how long do you need to pay that, Mr. <coughs> Sarko? Can I get a payment plan? Yeah. Well, it's $195, so let's just <coughs> just how, how long do you need? I mean, I'll give you some time. If you want to pay $50, you yeah. know, I'd give you. A week? Yeah, I get paid weekly, so $50 a week. I'll give you even. I'll give you more time than I'll give you until uh, October thirty first to get it paid. And so you've got two more. more than two months. I'm going to set a show cause here <coughs> for uh, November third. Okay. So stick around. I'll give you a copy of the order. Are you on good times with your brother-in-law? Are you guys still? You know, we don't talk. I just my mom I ain't coming to. Hey, well, no, but I can go to work and take care of my family. No, I'm just my own business. I, I understand, but he's sitting out there. 
That's I mean, and that's not gonna be an issue. I'm a grown man. I understand. I'm just gonna go on with my business. And the, was there a bond? Was there a bond? Yeah, it's my 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 stepmom. She okay. paid it. She wants her money back, so. Yeah. And I'm poor kid. Yeah, I'm gonna order the bond returned. Judge is gonna return the bond. Your Honor, Mr. Uh, Marcus Villadua, did I say that right? Yes, sir. Has uh, indicated that he wants to plead guilty to a crime as cited by Deputy Cutler. All right. I'll get to him in just a minute. Okay. You're Marcos? Yes, sir. Thank you. He has, he has two charges, though. You're right. Okay. Oh, yeah, the public can talk. Okay. You plead guilty to both. How much time did you do in jail? A, a day? What, oh, all right. So I'll give you uh, time served on the public and tox, but you're going to have to pay $60 court costs on that one, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. got $255 you owe here. How, many, how do you want to pay that? Um, can I pay that in payments? You know, I think what I'll do is I'll give you the same amount of time I gave him. Here's his sixty dollars higher. But I'm gonna give you until uh, uh, October thirty first to get it paid. I'm gonna set a show cause hearing for November third. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, sir. So this is the first one. And it is given. Experience. Heat escapes, you got old windows, they just go right out the window. Right? No, we'll see you, sir. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So that, that's it, I'm done. I just, uh, you're done. Wait, so with the payments, where do I go? Court, court downstairs. Okay. You can mail them. All right, that's better, yeah. Thank you. I mean, I'm going to give you the address. All right, thank, thank you, you sir. You have a good day. to your place to help in the garden, but I wasn't.
this is the only thing I should have in Santa County right now. It's probably the only thing I should have anywhere. Go talk to Ben about it. Yeah. Okay. See if you can get it back down to a simple. Okay. I'll tell you at a point in time, you got to quit driving. What did they pull me over for? Just recognized you. That's a guy that got written out previously and he checked you, ran it, saw you didn't have a license. I was driving a whole different vehicle. <laughs> She didn't keep the thousand. And then I'm gonna get fined on top of it all. No, no. The thousand, you know, can be used. Go talk to Ben and see if you can get it worked out. And, uh, yeah. But I'm gonna keep the thousand as security. Right. Sounds good. to me and uh, has been trying to get a hold of Troy. Something about dropping one and picking it up with him or I uh, didn't quite understand what it did. So I just... The one that you're supposed to appear on today, he just missed. There's two of them. Yeah. I thought... I've only got one on my... Uh, I have one set for 10 a.m. and one set for 10.30. The only one I've got on mine is 10.30. All I can tell you is I'm only got one. 
Speak English? Yeah, yes, I do. A little bit. Where do you live? Huh? Where do you live? Oh, I don't know. Just a second. I'll get your daughter. Okay, He's going to call your daughter and she's going to help. Is this Maria? Yes. Okay, Maria, I have your father here. Okay. So the first thing I want to know is where does he live and where does he work? So come on up here, please. So he's here. You can talk to him, just say hi and you know, then find out that information for me if you would, please. Seven in a 55 mile an hour zone drunk, is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, he tested, he tested point one seven one, which is more than twice the legal limit in Iowa. So that's more like a half a fifth of whiskey or like eight beers. You 
our, our legal limit here in Iowa is 0 0.08, and he tested 0 0.171, so you know, twice the legal limit would be 0 0.160, he tested 0.171, so he's more than twice the legal limit. Is it a error in the meeting that you don't want to show you that you have to get the answer of 0.7.8 and the limit is 1.6. Okay. So I'm going to go through. First appearance here. I'll tell you first, and then you can convey to him, or maybe you can understand me. But this this charge is a serious misdemeanor, uh, which carries a maximum penalty of up to one year in jail. If he's convicted, there's a minimum two-day jail sentence. Okay, so tell him that first. All right, and there's a fine of not less than $1,250, nor greater than $1,875 plus 35% surcharge and court costs. And he's going to lose his driver's license. I guess he has a driver's license, is that right? Does he have a driver's license? Okay. So he's going to lose it for 180 days. Six months. But he could get a work permit if he does, you know, follows all the steps that have to be followed. So, you know, the problem here is he's an He's an out-of-state resident, you know, with no ties to Sac County. So what I have to do is figure out what I need to do to make sure that he shows up here to face this charge. And so the question is, you know, do I, you know, for local residents, we usually let people out on their own promise to appear. But for, you know, people that don't have any ties to the county, we usually make them post uh, a bond, and uh, then I also, we, you know, I'm going to impose some conditions on his release. Number one, he's not to drink or use illegal drugs. He has to obtain a substance abuse evaluation, things along that line. But first, we've got to figure out what we're going to do as far as the bond. So I guess uh, you know, I don't know if he could post, say, a thousand dollar cash bond that's probably what I'm looking at
ya me estaba la vez pasada también me agarró un... aquí en Iowa y yo pagué un ticket. Obviously, great concern to me that somebody's going 87 miles an hour drunk. Yeah. You know, just from a safety standpoint. But you know, I, somebody's going to have to post this thousand dollar bond, or I'm not going to let him out of jail. So you know, whether it's his employer or whoever, whoever uh, can do it. But I, I am going to require some surety here that he'll show up. Yeah, actually, it's, you know, it, it should be more than that, but, you know, he seems like a mature guy, and, you know, I don't really have any particular reason to mistrust him, but I'm going to look awfully foolish if I just let him go on his own recognizance, you know, he doesn't show up, so I am, I am going to, I'm going to require a $1,000 cash bond. Somebody's going to have to post that. If they post it, he can get out of jail. But he's, you know, that's not going to resolve the charge. I mean, the charge is still going to be there. Yeah. You know, he's going to have to. So the, you know, the minimum fine is, as I said earlier, is one thousand two hundred fifty dollars plus thirty five percent surcharge and court costs. So. Okay. Um, would we have to go up there and take it or something? Yeah, somebody's going to have to post the bond here. I think they'll take a credit card or they'll take cash, not a check. he's released, he has to have a substance abuse evaluation done. And on the, the papers that I'm going to give him here, there's a place in Storm Lake, and there's a place here in Sac City that does it. Uh, you know, there's probably places in Fort Dodge. I'm not sure about Eagle Grove. But he's going to have to you know, arrange for this substance abuse evaluation at his cost. And he has to get a copy to the clerk here in Sac County within 30 days. But he'll have, you know, he'll have this paperwork, and it's all set out in there. So, uh, you know, somebody should be able to read the, you know, the English part of it. And, you know, I'm not trying to be hard on him. I'm trying to be as easy on him as I can be, because uh, I don't, you know, have any reason to mistrust. But I have to have some kind of surety here in Sac County that he's going to, you know, show up and face these charges. So that's why I'm requiring a thousand dollar bond. All right. Um, thank you. So somebody will show up with a thousand, you know, can spring him out of jail. Then you need to get, you know, his copy of this of this document that I'm preparing, and uh, uh, you know, it it would be really good if you could give us, you know, good contact information for. You know, I don't know what mailing address you want me to use. Do you have a okay. do you have a mailing address you want me to use for sure? Yeah. I, mean, um, I can take your mailing address and or or his. What 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 yeah. mail what mailing address do you want me to use? Uh A fifty eight. 
just individually. Six, eight, six, zero, one. Okay. All right. Okay, so and once he's released, he's not to use any alcohol or drugs. He's not to drive while his license is suspended. He's to obey all laws the state of Iowa and the United States. All right. Okay. But all that's on here. You can go over that with him. And uh, we'll go from there. Get the thousand okay. bucks here, all right? Okay, um, do you do that in like five hours? That's fine. You can go to the law enforcement center. Uh, if she comes after 4.30, if it's before, we, we don't have a way to do the um, credit card. Okay. So there, if it's after 4.30, no credit card. Okay, yep, that's fine. Um, okay. It'll take cash then. Okay. And the number to call if you get here after 4.30 is 712-662-7127. 7127. Okay, yep, I got the number. Okay. All right. Okay, well, thank you so much, and I'll hit that way then. All right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and talk to her. What is the name of the Um, She's wondering about the car and the kid ticket. That's been told to Rice Brothers. They'll yes. have to Rice Brothers in early, and that, so there'll be a tow charge associated with that. I yeah, but I don't know how much. Do uh, you know their number? Not off the top of my head. I can call the comm center and see. I can, I can give them that stuff. Um, she can call in a little bit and we can give her that number. Okay, call that, that uh, 7127 number in a little while. Okay. And she will have the information about the, uh, you know, what it's going to cost to get the, the car released. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. It's okay. All right. Uh, it's it's better than I know. Speed limit is too, will you? Opportunity stuff right here. I'll highlight that for you. Okay. All right.